Hey everyone, out. Uh, what is this? No, 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 no. We don't do, we don't do shirts on this channel. Anyways, hey everyone, Alex here, and today is Zomp Talk episode eight. The fitness space is bad on YouTube. All right, that that's the title. All right. What prompted me to make this video was a guy named Mario Rios. Basically, he's a guy who consistently attacks bodybuilders for not being functional and he doesn't understand that hamstrings have two functions so he's not functional himself you know but that's what that's just what prompted this video and uh i'm gonna go through a few points the fitness community really really sucks on youtube so let's get into it this video is not about him it's just about the whole fitness space on youtube now number one there's a lot of unnecessary drama a, a lot of unnecessary drama look at I mean, Mario Rios is a good example. You can also look at Greg Doucette, and uh, those are the only two names I can think of currently. Those are the big guys, all right? And then, Natty or Not is a great example of stupid drama that doesn't matter. Who cares? It shouldn't matter, and it's just a huge waste of time. Number two is contradictory advice. A great example of this is the bulking is not optimal for myofibula hypertrophy uh, people. And then there's the other side, which is me, I'm on this side, who say that bulking is probably the best thing you can do for your gains, depending on where you're at. And uh, I could go over so many other things, there's people who think that you should go straight to a cut to get abs, people like me who think that you should bulk first and then cut to get abs, there's people who say don't bother training abs at all, there's people who say ab training is essential, you don't know who to fucking trust. Let me give you a few names though, Rival Fitness, Hamza, Sean Nawani. Especially Sean Nawani, but those three dudes are very, very reliable for information on fitness. And of course, the force is your boy right here. Number three, people who are very dogmatic about things, and then they attack everyone who disagrees. The great example, and the perfect example, is the vegan community, perpetuated by that vegan teacher and uh, that one kid who watched his grandpa have a heart attack and filmed it instead of helping. That dude's a piece of shit as well. Uh, and then there's a few other people, but I'm not gonna bother naming names anymore. And being dogmatic about certain things can really cost you, because there are the dogmatic carnivores, the dogmatic uh, vegans or vegetarians or whatever. There's the people who think that if you drink milk, you're gonna become a woman and grow bitch tits. There's the people who think that vegetables are useless. There's people who think that fruit is going to somehow give you diabetes. People who think meat's going to give you cancer. It is a bunch of bullshit, right? And number four, probably the most detrimental, body dysmorphia is very prominent. And it's a terrible thing. Now, if you don't know what body dysmorphia is, it's basically you think you look a lot worse than you actually do. It's mostly in the aesthetics and the bodybuilding community because, I mean, it's just ripe for it, right? You scroll on Instagram or whatever website you got, you see Jack dude after Jack dude after Jack dude. You see a guy who benches twice as much as you. You see a guy who squats four times as much as you do. It's it's just it's a shit fest. And the biggest uh, biggest pro tip I can give you is to delete anything that isn't YouTube. Honestly, now I have an Instagram. I don't. I've never scrolled on reels or scrolled on story posts or anything. I follow like five people and all I do is I post and then I get off the website. That's it. If you can apply that to all websites, including YouTube, just get on post or like watch what you want to watch and then get off before you start scrolling. That's a very good thing to do. A very good habit. And probably the worst perpetuator of body dysmorphia is Greg Doucette. Now, he has verbatim said, if you can't see your abs, you're fat. He's changed that a little bit. If you can't see abs, you're probably eating enough. Still not true. Except it's just a little toned down this time. New sentence, kind of the same shit. Basically, it's not true because you can be skinny and not have abs. For example, take my sister. No offense to her, but at one point she was 5'2", about 90, 100 pounds. Does, but she probably did not have defined abdominal muscles. Does that mean she should try to lose weight at 5'2 and 90 to 100 pounds? Probably not, probably not. And 
that goes for a lot of people that you can be skinny and not have abs but if you don't have abs even though you're skinny should you go on a cut because if you don't have abs you're probably eating enough but yeah that's just four problems i can name like five more but those are the most prominent ones but that's gonna do it for this video everyone hope you enjoyed it more of a rant video today no like background exercise footage i'll put some music in i like putting music in now it's kind of cool but i already said that's gonna do it for this video ah whatever all right see you later guys no i said we don't do shirts on this channel